What's the most embarrassingly awkward situation you ever encountered while staying at a friend's house as a kid? How about while a friend was staying at my house? Friend was supposed to spend the night, but her mom didn't come to pick her up in the morning. Or the morning after that. I don't remember how long she stayed, but after 2-4 days, my mom eventually drove my friend to her, my friend's, grandmother's house. I was at my best friend of 10 years' house, and in the middle of dinner with his family, his parents decided to announce to their children, and me, that they would be getting a divorce and splitting up the family. My friend didn't talk much that night, and the worst part was that I couldn't leave, because my parents were out of town and I was staying with them. You were the control group. I was at a group sleepover for a neighbor's birthday party. At night when I wanted to sleep, the girls were being way too loud. So, I went to go sleep in her brother's room. He was out at his own sleepover. I opened the door and saw that their aunt was in the bed. No big deal, except she shouted close the door or I'll slit your freaking throat. I was 9. Went upstairs at a friend's house so she could ask her mother permission to walk downtown. Mother and boyfriend are nude, clearly have just finished having intercourse and make no move to cover themselves from other people's 11 year old's eyes. Maybe adult nudity shouldn't be a big deal, but my friend was clearly embarrassed. Her mother had also been separated from her father for less than a year at the time. Her older sister came into the room as we were leaving to ask them how the frick they thought having intercourse with the door open was appropriate in the middle of the afternoon in a house full of neighboring children. I was at a friend's house when we were both 11-12 years old. I had the bright idea of biking down to the nearest grocery store to get snacks so he asked his dad for permission. His dad said no, so my friend started arguing, then crying, then throwing an all-out temper tantrum. He ended up getting spanked and sent to his room while I got to ride back home. I just sat and stared at the wall the whole time it was going down and felt like it was my fault because I suggested it. Had to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night and ended up plugging the toilet. I figured if I keep flushing it'll go down. Nope. Flooded the bathroom with poop water. Another time. Same friend same toilet also in the middle of the night. The water pipe was frozen but I really had to go. So I ended up leaving a big rank pile of liquidy crap in the dry bowl. In the morning the hole downstairs smelled awful and his parents wouldn't make eye contact. You figure that they won't invite you back after the first time. At a buddy's house in like 4th grade, him and his little brother were arguing about whose turn it was to do the dishes. The dad got pee grabbed them both by the head and slammed them together. It made that lovely thwack sound. They both started crying and the dad turns and says to me you think Theo'll do the dishes now. I was quite scared and left ASAP. When I was in the 4th grade, I had a friend who I spent every weekend with. We stayed at his house and watched movies or played games. This particular day, we were about 5 hours into a Grand Theft Auto playthrough. We ran out of things to talk about, so we had been pretty quiet for a while. He turned to me, with the biggest smile on his face, and let out one of the biggest farts I've ever heard. I knew that I had to try to beat his fart, so I let one out. It wasn't as loud, but it was much longer. We both sat there for a bit laughing, when he let another one rip. It was even louder and longer than both of our other farts combined. Try and beat that one he said. I prep myself, getting ready for the fart of my life. I looked him in the eyes and let that fart fly. Only, there was no fart, but there was a filling feeling in my pants. Are you going to do it he hadn't caught on that I just filled my pants with crap right in his room. I told him that he beat me and I excused myself to the bathroom. I sat there for 20 minutes trying to figure out what to do. I finally made my decision. I emptied his bathroom garbage, took the bag and stuck my poopy underwear in it. I stuck the bag in my pocket and left the bathroom. Hey man, what took so long I'm leaving? Why shut up? I ran towards the door, jumped on my crappy BMX bike, and pedaled as fast as I could back to my house. Kid's dad brings us dinner at the table. He gets a sippy cup. His dad asks me if I need one or if I can be trusted not to spill on the table. I say I don't need one. I immediately knock my drink all over the table. We were at least 10 years old. I knock drinks over regularly now. I was at one of my friend's houses for Easter this year and all of his aunts were drinking wine out of sippy cups so that they wouldn't spill when they were all blackout drunk. Not a terrible idea. 
I was staying over at a friend's house with a couple other neighborhood kids. My friend's parents essentially locked my friends and I in the basement for the night so we could have our sleepover down there. And once the door was shut my friend's parents get into a huge fight over some inane crap. It was horrible. It sounded like they were screaming at the absolute top of their lungs. Throwing plates around. Flipping furniture. And at one point I think I heard one of them threaten to get a gun and start shooting. But the worst part was the two hours of angry makeup fricking in their creaky bed that followed their tirade. But AWW that's so sweet that they made up afterwards. I went to spend the night with a girl from class for the first time. I was excited too. She was one of those girls everyone was afraid of and I was really timid and shy. Within an hour of getting there, her mom and sister got into a huge screaming argument. The mom stabbed herself in the leg with a butcher's knife. As a result of the fight, I'm not sure why, her dad loaded up the mom, sister, my friend and me into their tiny car to take the mom to the hospital. The mom was stating the whole time she wouldn't go in. We all sat in the parking lot as they argued for about an hour. We drove back to her house without going into the air. Mom, sister, and dad began fighting again. This was around midnight. I called my mom to check in and tell her goodnight and gave her the secret phrase to come home. I forgot to bring my toothbrush. We feigned a family emergency and she came to get me. Never did get an offer to sleep over again. The time when, at age 9, I marched up to my best friend Becky's mom and said, Becky isn't adopted. Joe just said that she was adopted. Joe was her older brother. Becky's mom just stood there, awkwardly, then said it was time for me to go home. Turns out Becky was adopted. Her parents hadn't told her yet. I have no idea why her brother felt the need to tell me and not his sister. My friend had a problem where he wet the bed. One time a few people and I were over at his house and his butthole dad came in his room and berated him about wetting the bed. He was embarrassing him about it and even punished him. He made us all go home because of something my friend couldn't control. I guess you can say that was pretty awkward. I stayed at a mate's house once when I was around 9. In the morning as I was eating breakfast his dad just decides to sit beside me and pull a bong. At 8am. I was supposed to meet my friend at his house at around 5 because he had some appointment with his mom. I get there at probably 4.45 and head up to their back deck. My house was a couple blocks behind his so I always came this way. So I go up to their big glass doors and I see his dad getting railed by the next door neighbor. I have never told him this but I can never be in a room alone with his dad again. The lesson here is to know your family's schedule. You never know when your son's creepy friend will show up. 3am. My friend and I stop playing Halo for a bit and go to get some water cause we were thirsty. Walk into the kitchen to see his dad's girlfriend giving his dad head in the middle of the room. We stayed thirsty all night. Everyone stayed thirsty, except dad's girlfriend. Walked into the toilet in the middle of the night to find his mum shaving her butthole with an electric razor. Let me try and paint a picture. She was standing by the toilet with one foot up on the edge of the sink, one hand peeling her cheeks apart and the other holding the buzzing instrument which was making laps of her ring piece. I stood for what felt like an eternity but it couldn't have been more than 5 or 6 seconds simply staring at this trying to comprehend what was happening. Her blue eyes and brown are locked with my eyes and we both held our breath, the hum of the razor chewing her ass as the only sound bouncing off the bathroom walls. A sickening concert, heralding the onset of potential repressed memories. She said my name really quietly, half a gasp. She flicked the switch off yet held her flamingo stance. I said uh and ran back to my sleeping bag, pulled it over my head and tried to go to sleep. In the morning she never left her room, said she was ill, never was allowed to stay at his place again. My friend's dad died in his sleep the one night I stayed over there, so. My friend's sister had a birthday party and I was invited, we were 16, we got really drunk. My friend for the first time, and when we went home I slept in his bed. My friend's bed is really high up like plus 2 meters and I puked in the middle of the night on him. He slept on the floor, resulting in splashing all over his room. I spent the rest of the night cleaning his room. The next day I got invited for lunch and they made special food for his sister birthday and I could not make eye contact with anyone. So embarrassing. He is still one of my best friends and his room smelled for another 6 months because of my vomiting. 5th grade. 
Started hanging out with a kid I never really did before and he had a sleepover with our mutual friends for his birthday. Everything was great. Played N64 all night in his basement and his mom was cooking all sorts of food and being generally awesome. Gets late we all start falling asleep in the basement. Then dad gets home drunk as all heck. His parents proceeded to scream and beat the crap out of each other all while we were in the basement witnessing the entire ordeal upstairs. After about 10 minutes we hear his older sister enter the scuffle trying to stop it and get them to calm down and stop. Dad hits the sister. Mom pulls a knife out and starts threatening dad. Sister runs away. Dad throws a lamp and promptly exits the house with various name calling and swearing. All quiet upstairs except for his mom crying. We hear her on the phone and shortly after a cop shows up to file a report, I assume, and an aunt shows up to console mom. We all kind of fall asleep wondering what the frick happened. Next morning we go upstairs and see some damage, but the mess is cleaned up. We try engaging with his mom and she seems okay, just worn down. We offer to take some trash bags outside for her and see some ripped up presents in the garbage can outside. That night his dad took off and filed for divorce not long after and his sister didn't come home for a few days, until they were pretty positive he wouldn't be back. I was at my friend's house and his parents told him that after I left he had to take a bath. He started throwing a fit crying and screaming I refuse. I refuse and I just stood there on the steps not knowing what to do. His parents remained calm through the fit but I couldn't take it anymore and kinda slinked out the back door. He was an interesting kid. I was at my friend's house, age 11. Anytime I wasn't in school or at home I was there, so his family was used to me being around. This time a little too much. We were in the kitchen making food, when his dad strolls in after a shower, expecting only his son to be there, and flashes him while letting rip. I'll never forget it, the horror. Okay, here we go. I was about 12 and sleeping over at a friend's house. There was an argument between him and his brother and they started fighting. Now, I'm lying on the bottom bunk pretending to be asleep when their mother storms in and heads straight to the top bunk, where the fight is happening. At this point I open my eyes to realize that the mother is wearing nothing but a very large t-shirt that goes down to just below the hip. The mother reaches the bunk beds and proceeds to reach out to restrain the brothers. In doing so the large t-shirt comes up to reveal what can only be described as a hairy beast. She had no underwear on whatsoever. I look at it for about 8 seconds before the t-shirt covers it again after she's done telling off the brothers. I lie there in shock before exclaiming to my friend I've just seen your mum's coochie. He laughed his head off. When he pulled out a machete from under the bed at 3am and said he used it to cut lizards heads off. In the morning, I walked in on his little brother not jerking off but just playing with his junk in the middle of the living room. I noped the frick out and never went back was staying at friend's house in the country for the weekend in 5th grade. They had a lot of animals, including two adorable lab puppies. Unfortunately none of their animals were treated and one of the puppies got distemper and died. I guess it happened quite quickly, I don't know. We were outside and my friend's dad and brother were looking at the other puppy, which was being extremely playful. They said it was a sign of distemper, then they beat the puppy to death with a hammer. No one was happy about this, nor did anyone seem to mind that they were surrounded by kids. I don't know jack crap about distemper. This is the first time I've thought about it in over a decade for sure, so I can't really remember how my 11 year old brain processed that. I remember my friend, a girl, was crying but I wasn't. I was comforting her for some reason, saying, don't worry, it'll be okay weird. That's not a sign of distemper, it would be the opposite. They would be lethargic, vomiting, and just other stuff. That puppy was okay. What he did was extremely cruel. Walked in on my friend's dad pooing. Back when I was in middle school, my friends and I used to play airsoft, and we took it seriously. We had expensive guns, armor, the whole nine. Anyway, we used to play back in the woods behind our neighborhood, in the middle of which there was a field. So, we're playing, and I'm on the edge of the field. Along the edge of said field, there are piles of mulch that had to be at least 9 feet high. We used them for cover. Well, I saw my friends on the opposing team approaching, so I ran as fast as I could, and jumped next to one of the mulch piles. Except, I fell in. As I roll back out, I can feel the barrage of airsoft bullets hitting me. I'm out. I'm out. Jesus, 
Stop shooting I begged. We never started they replied. This is when I look down to see that I am covered in fire ants. I couldn't even see the color of my shirt. Panicking. I start trying to rip off my clothes. But I remember that I'm wearing armor which someone else has to help me remove. So, I endure the pain as my friends run across the field to me, and eventually remove the armor. As soon as they do, I strip naked as I begin running back through the woods and onto the main street of my neighborhood, down a few blocks, and straight into the living room of the friend whose house I was at, which is when I made deer in the headlights eye contact with his two parents who are on the couch. Pausing only for a moment, I run out their back door, and jump into the pool. Ah, relief. I wanna know what the parents we thinking during all this. They just see their son's friend running naked and then jump in the pool. Sleepover. Woke up to weird noises. Look to my left to see my bud banging his girlfriend. Right there. In the same room. Sleepover. And you didn't join the threesome as they wanted. Dude. I had a friend I guess when I was around 10. Let's call him Jack. He invited me over to a sleepover at his house. We were going to watch Ghostbusters 2 which had just come out on VHS at Blockbuster. Anyways, I get there and I am surprised to see this other kid from my school there. He was about our age. Let's call him Jim. I remember going downstairs sometime after the movie started to get something to drink. When I came back upstairs and opened the door I was shocked. Jack and Jim were on the bed. Jack was on his back and Jim was on top of him. I could see the baby erect dongs basically banging into each other. I was like WTF. My 10 year old brain couldn't comprehend what was going on. Jack acted like it was no big deal and called it sword fighting and wanted to know if I wanted to join in. I just said nothing and proceeded to rewatch the movie. I never really talked to Jack again. You've been visited by Professor Papa. You'll ace all your classes this year only if you comment, study hard Papa. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.